Over the past two to three weeks, I've been working with the Laser Master 3, and not only have I managed to burn and destroy more plywood than ever I've before in the workshop, but I've also discovered quite a lot about the machine and its capabilities, and how it can not only aid me in my day-to-day -day work in the workshop, but also that it can open a few new doors and maybe let me create a few products that I would have never entertained before. Prior to receiving the Laser Master 3, I owned an Atom Stack A5 Pro for a couple of years, and I bought that laser specifically to engrave my logo onto the products that I make. I've never experimented with anything past that. That's what I wanted to achieve, that's what I made it do, and that's what it did for the last two years. Being a 5.5 watt laser, I kind of automatically assumed that it wasn't really capable of anything else, or if it was gonna cut anything or do anything fancy it was going to take far too long with the advent of the laser master 3 arriving a 20 watt laser i started thinking surely i can do other stuff with this surely this is powerful enough for me to push the boundaries a little bit past just burning my logo i'm going to start with just showing you what settings i'm going to go with for the logo just to set a baseline um, but i'm not just going to do it on ply i'll test it out with ply first and then what I want to do is find my settings for oak, utility, maple, birch, all the woods that I usually use. Then I'm going to move on to engraving some um, horse images onto slate coasters and table mats and possibly onto some wooden coasters as well. And then once we've gone through that, then I'm going to move on to cutting out some shapes, some little Christmas decorations some other shapes and then eventually I'm going to end up at cutting out templates that I can use to make serving boards to sell at the show. Now there's quite a lot to go through so this is going to be a fairly whistle-stop tour so hold on to your braces let's get to it. So as mentioned I'm going to start with engraving my logo in a piece of laser ply came from a company called Kitronic I'll put a link to them down below in the description I'm starting with a speed of 10,000 and a power output of 50%. Focal set. So let's see how this comes out. As you can see on the plot, there's a couple of previous attempts. That's not bad at all as a test run just to set a benchmark from that took just under three and a half minutes. As you can see I've got these settings in my library so I'm just going to drop that down 9000 just to make it a little darker. It's added about 10-15 seconds to the burn time, but it looks a lot better. Really happy with that. And now for the oak. Based on the result of the pine, I've gone for a speed of 5,000 and power output again at 50%. The light burn is estimating about 5 minutes, but once again I'll speed this up. Well, that's come out really well. Very happy with that. And that is absolutely stunning. And there are the three test burns together. The plywood, simulated pine and maple, the oak and the utility. 
Utility takes a burn beautifully. It comes out so crisp. So onto something a little more challenging. Well, for me anyway. So what I've had to do is go and find some information online about how to work with a multi-shaded image in Lightburn. And I found some fantastic vids and I'll put links to those below in the description for you. But essentially what I've had to do, and I'll let the, the guy in the other video explain. Apologies for that. Apparently the battery in my microphone died. Anyway, as I was saying, in order to get this picture the way I wanted it, on the slate, I've had to change the enhanced radius and enhance amount values. And I've also had to change the contrast, the brightness and the gamma settings. And in order to get the image output the way I wanted it, because it's going on the slate, that when it engraves on the slate, it's going to come out inverted. So I've used the negative image button to allow me to see a better likeness of what the output from the laser is going to be. The other thing I've done is set the speed to 7500, the max power to 45%, but I've also used the new feature in Lightburn called dot width correction, which again, I'll let the other guy in the other video explain. And there's the end result, the table mat and the coaster. I'm really, really pleased with that. So impressed. And they're gonna look even better once I get a coat of lacquer on them. We'll see that at the end. So on to some cutting then, and this really is wandering in. The pastures are new for me. As I mentioned earlier, I've not attempted any cutting with the previous laser before, because I assumed that 5.5 wall, it wasn't gonna cut anything substantial enough for me to use. So with this laser, I'm wading straight in with some 4mm uh, laser ply, again sourced from Kytronic, link in the description below. So I'm going for some little Christmas decorations out of this 4mm ply. I've got my speed set to 325mm per minute and my power output is at 50%, which means to cut these four decorations is going to take it about 17 minutes. So once I've finished blathering on, I'll obviously speed it up so you can got to sit there for that amount of time. I think with these, I'm inclined to up the power and the speed a little bit to try and get them out the door a bit quicker. I'm not exactly going to sell for an awful lot of money. Although you'll see at the end, they pretty up quite substantially with some appropriately coloured Christmas paint and a bit of lacquer. The other thing I should mention is I've put a sheet of aluminium underneath the ply. As you probably noticed in the previous part of the video, there are the, the residue, the overburn from some previous tests on the baseboard underneath the laser and I really want to reduce that impact as much as possible. So instead of spending lots of money on what I invariably will end up buying, one of those honeycomb bases, I've just bought a sheet of aluminium from a, a local hardware store called Screwfix and I'm hoping that that'll solve the issue for the minute. <laughs> Just a couple of places that it hasn't quite burnt through, but they're teeny tiny little bits. I might just up the power by one or two percent. Now. But apart from that, I think we've got the setting bang on for those. Now let's move on to something a little more challenging. So based on the values that are in the accompanying sheet that comes with the Laser Master 3, 
the settings are listed against the power value of 100% and as mentioned before I want to avoid using 100% so I prolong the life of the laser as much as possible so I started with a speed of 175 and 150 and I cut those at the same time and both of them cut straight through so I then upped it to 200 that cut straight through 250 didn't make it nor did 225 so this is what I feel is the last attempt at 210 and that's not gone through yeah it's, cut, it's all but gone through so I'm going to stick with the 200 millimeters per minute at 50% power just to make sure I get through any harder parts of the ply because that's this one and that cut straight through without any issues at all so on to the 9mm ply then and as you can see on the screen it's taken me quite a bit of time and quite a lot of trial and error to eventually get to the setting that works which is speed of 175 millimeters per minute and a power output of 90 percent but with two passes this time which i think i'm still quite happy with i don't see it as a inordinate amount of time especially because on nine mil and if i can manage to get it to do it 12 mil ply i'm going to be using that for cutting templates and i'm not going to be cutting templates every day of the week so I really don't mind if it's going to take a little longer. So on to the 12 mil. The 12 mil ply, well, that didn't come out quite as well as I'd hoped. The 6 mil first, beautiful, clean edge, lovely, easily usable as a template. The 9 mil, again, lovely, clean edge, might need the slightest bit of sanding, but very minimal. On the whole, delighted with that. I think that's well usable as a template. The 12 mil, well, the 12 mil it just required the laser to be in contact with it for far too long in my opinion looking at the result if you know better then please leave a comment below i had to come down to a speed of 75 millimeters per minute with three passes at 100 percent and that's this is the results that i was getting this really charred and and burnt even with the air assist on slightly better results running at a higher speed so this is 100 percent power 750 millimeters per minute 20 passes so the laser was in contact with it for a far shorter period of time hence less burning may well be usable i may try it with a little bit of sandpaper but the results just not as good as the nine mil the nine mil is really good so i'm going to use the nine mil to cut my template with for the serving board I need. That has come out so well. It's a really clean cut. And the only bit that didn't is that teeny weeny bit there, which I'll trim off with a knife. I'll give that a little clean up with sandpaper. And that is the perfect template, ready to go. Well, I think the results speak for themselves. I'm more than happy. In fact, I'm delighted with the output of this laser, the result. 
Engraver my logo on hardwood now takes a third of the time that it did before and I haven't lost any detail whatsoever. I also get the ability now to cut through ply. Admittedly, or I think that the 5.5 watt laser would have cut through 4 mil ply. It may have been an awful lot slower, but I kind of think it might have done it. This cuts through it in a very reasonable period of time and with a little bit of spray paint, as you can see, they're really quite attractive and I think I might even put them on our tree at Christmas if I put a tree up. Then the ability to engrave on slate. Again, the 5.5 watt laser would have done it. This just does it that much quicker. The effect is stunning. Absolutely love it. But the game changer for me is the ability to cut plywood templates on the laser. So I haven't got to go through all the rigmarole of getting the CNC up and running. Or if you haven't got a CNC, maybe the laser will do the job for you. A little bit disappointed I couldn't get the 12 mil ply to cut cleanly. Who knows, maybe a 30 watt laser would do that if you're watching Orter. But the 9 mil has come out really, really well. As mentioned, just a little bit of sandpaper around the edge, I think, just to clean up that so smooth anything off. And I think the 9 mil is going to be more than thick enough for a router guide bush or a bearing guided router bit. So on the whole, really really pleased with the abilities of this latest laser from Orter. As to whether it's value for money or not I think you you've got to answer that question for yourself whether you can put it to good use in work your workshop whether it's going to complement the work that you already do or whether it's going to introduce new features and abilities for you that maybe you can turn a buck on or a pound. So I hope you've enjoyed this video Thank you very much indeed for watching. If you have, give us a thumbs up and possibly even subscribe to the channel to see what else I may get up to here at the GT Woodshop. Thanks very much indeed. Ta-ra.